So you're thinking about going to the Sundance Film Festival. After two trips there, I now have eight tips to make the most out of your experience. This is my second time attending the film festival, and I've been working as a photographer, so mostly shooting private events, sometimes red carpets, and so I don't have the typical Sundance experience, but still being on the ground there, I've learned a few things to make my time at Sundance more enjoyable. First of all, dress appropriately. This is very important, especially if you haven't spent a lot of time in the snow. So a few items you should definitely have in your suitcase are gloves, a hat or beanie, a really thick winter jacket, and boots. Insulated boots are incredibly important because there is snow on the ground pretty much the entire time. Tip number two, sign up for Uber or Lyft. Now Lyft is the official partner for Sundance, and so they have specific areas where drivers can pick up and drop off people that are off of Main Street. So Lyft is a really great idea for getting in and around the festival. Most of the festival activities actually take place on Main Street, but Main Street is almost always crowded. It's full of people, full of traffic, so driving up and down Main Street isn't always the best idea. One of the first times you're absolutely going to have to use that rideshare app is when you first arrive into Salt Lake City. So from the Salt Lake City Airport, which is where most people will start their journey, you have to go about 40 minutes into Park City. Now my Uber the first time around I think took about $50 without tip just to go into Park City. There's also a free trolley that will run up and down Main Street and also take you to most of the major venues around Park City. Tip number three, go grocery shopping once you arrive. So like any other mountain resort town, Park City is not cheap and that applies not only to accommodations, but also to food and beverages. This is also true because a lot of the typical restaurants that might be open regularly during Sundance are actually closed and they're blocked off for private events. So it's really hard to know in advance which restaurants are gonna be available. But even if you do get into a restaurant, like I said, the prices are really expensive compared to most other places. Although, really, they're about equivalent to what you'd find here in Seattle. So for me, they were about average. So one of the first things that people tend to do when they first arrive at Park City is go directly to the grocery store. There's a big one called Fresh Market, and it's about a half mile away from, from Main Street. I found it to be especially helpful just to get breakfast items because breakfast can really add up. Another thing that you should definitely stock up on at the grocery store is water. Because Park City is at an elevation of about 7,000 feet, uh, the air is really thin and that can take some getting used to. But speaking of expensive food, there is one little way to get around that, and that is tip number four, which is go to the daytime lounges that are open on Main Street. Sundance is always a little tricky because there's a lot of private parties happening, but there's also some public spaces, and they're often sponsored by big brands and they actually want people to come in. And so these public spaces almost always have free food Food, free coffee, free water, free swag. So it's really easy to get in even without a festival badge. So all you have to do is show up during the right time of day when they're open. So here are a few things that I got just by randomly walking into festival lounges during the day and just seeing what they had available. I got a little multi-tool from the Canon Lounge, a beanie and a fanny pack from Refinery29, and an official water bottle from the Acura Lounge. And this was all in addition to also having some snacks, uh, some free coffee. And it's not just like cheap coffee either. A lot of times they had actual baristas making espresso drinks and that was all for free. It's always a good idea to walk up and down Main Street, get an idea of where those lounges are and when they're open to the public. Tip number five, know the layout. So Sundance is a pretty big festival and a lot of the venues within Park City are actually pretty spread out. A lot of the main parties and events and screenings are gonna take place on Main Street, but there's a lot of theaters that are off of Main Street and might require either a really long walk or a Lyft or Uber drive to get there. So it's important to know where those venues are. Tip number six, get on the movie wait list in order to see a film. Now this is one that I actually have the least experience with because when I'm at Sundance, I'm not there to see films and I actually have yet to see a full feature film while I'm there. It's my understanding actually that you don't need to have a festival pass to see a film. I've heard that as many as 15% of people that go to see films at Sundance get into those films by being on a wait list. So it's not uncommon to be on a wait list. Tip number seven, and this one is very important. It's 
be respectful. And that applies to just every person you meet at Sundance. This applies not only to the police officers that are there to make sure that traffic is flowing properly, but also to the festival volunteers, because Sundance is still very much a volunteer-run festival. Is the co-op 625 is going to be on that side? Across the street? Okay. This also applies to celebrities. So there are lots of A-list celebrities that are working on independent films. So it's not unusual to be walking up and down Main Street and to see A-list talent or just lines of people waiting for A-list talent to appear. Now if you see a celebrity at Sundance, tip number seven is extremely important. Be respectful. Remember that they're human beings and that a lot of times they're there to promote their film. And a lot of times they're really stressed. Depending on who the celebrity is, sometimes they're open to being approached to sign autographs or have conversations on the street. But if you have an opportunity to do that, keep it short, keep it simple. Speaking of respecting cops, it's very important to do that in Utah because cops in Utah don't mess around. A lot of my Uber drivers were telling me that they'll get ticketed and pulled over just for going two miles over the speed limit, and that is a pretty standard thing in Utah. There are also lots of cops on Main Street to help people cross the road. And I actually got called out for a cop just by walking slightly out of the crosswalk. And for the eighth and final tip, it is just to have fun. And if you had the chance to, go skiing or go snowboarding. There's a lift that runs up and down uh, from like one of the main entrances at Main Street. And so it's super easy to get up there and have some fun skiing or snowboarding. I myself have not had the chance to do that yet, but I see people do it every day and the conditions look amazing. Well, there you have it. Eight tips for surviving the Sundance Film Festival. I hope this helps you if you plan to go to the film festival, which you definitely should because it's a fantastic setting and there's always some great films that are being screened there. If you have any tips or questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.